just get sub details. Here we are, um, back for another man in the van. Me and John are cracking over a cold one. Um, cheers, everybody. Now, look, before we start, this is my guest in this man in the van, John Adamson. Uh, big shout out to Whole Shop Motorhomes. Right, look, you think we're having, we're on the Terps, but this is apparently non-alcoholic beer that Nuno, just to, just to prove it. Absolutely pathetic. <laughs> So, in my mind, it's not beer, John, but no, no, you deserve at least a cold one. Yeah. John Adamson, right, I'm going to be honest here, who are you? Because, like, for me, like, you've just kind of, not burst on this, I mean, I heard of your name, but you've just sort of, over the last couple of years, really started to show some genuine speed. Where's well, that come from? I've only been back for the last three years. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, obviously, quite a long way from you, as you said. Yeah. I'm from down, right down south, and I'm from the other end of the country. Yeah. Um, obviously, we did all the sort of youth racing, never anything special, really. Just I had some good results, and uh, well, the BYMX actually had a second in the championship. So, but just through consistency, really. Yeah. Um, and then I got to 18, finished with the youths, and we went straight into MX1. So when was, so when. See, I've heard of your name in, in the youth motor course, but didn't really pay much attention, which is bad on my behalf. So you mostly learnt your trade riding in Scotland, really. Mm -hmm. And then, so when did you, how many years did you do before you started doing nationals? You, you know, was it a slow burning thing? Well, I did the nationals, um, as I said, as a youth, and then I got to 18 and I just, it's totally well me and my dad were arguing you know it's like you spend so much time together yeah. and there's all the aggro in the pits with the politics and i was just like get me out of here i'll just yeah. go and do my own thing and went and did exactly what 18 year olds do just yeah. got pissed for a couple of years Excellent. he's not doing it now i'd just like to point that out that <laughs> no. is not that is non-alcoholic i can't stress that enough <laughs> i'm all right drinking but he's an athlete yeah so and then Actually, my mechanic for like when I joined the team, I got a mechanic, and it was him that got me back into bikes. I was totally over it, but I was my dad's got a motorbike shop in Paisley, right. Tripoli Motorcycles. So I was working in there, and I ended up getting friendly with a few of the customers. Yeah. And there was an indoor motocross place, so Tuesday nights we'd go there, get pizza, do two ten-minute motos, and then <laughs> just and then and then I had I always had a crosser sitting there, but hardly. Yeah. I was really just collected dust. And then I started going to the bings with them, just doing a bit of free riding. And to be honest, all I did was smash myself up trying these jumps and not quite making them and crashing. And then, then the general progression, Scott was just getting into motocross and then we started going to the tracks together. Yeah. And then you're riding round and it's still, it's always the same. Well, you go away and come back and it's still the same faces. So yeah. you knew who was kind of going fast and you could see and you're thinking, I'm not far off them. So I had, I'd had my own two stroke because when me and my dad stopped he was he said I broke his heart <laughs> and that he wasn't up for helping me again. He was just kinda of, well if you wanna do it, do it yourself. That's quite a candid thing to say, like your dad to say that to you. Yes. Yeah, because so uh, he obviously meant it. Yeah, he, he was well he was at the end honestly I think it was more for him than me. Yeah. Which obviously isn't right, but he is motorbikes through and through you he works, he's got his shop, he works on motorbikes, he comes back and he'll watch road racing, motocross, the yeah. AME, it's just like bikes through and through. So I think there was a huge part of him missing when I decided, yeah, to, I'm always gonna go and get pissed for a few years. <laughs> so when I got back, and obviously it's such a financial dream, yeah. he was just like, mm. well, if you want to do it, crack on, go and do it. Yeah. But, um, so we were just planning on doing the Scotty, well, because obviously I was on a really tight budget because I was just doing it myself off a of mechanics wage and um, I was planning on doing the Scottish Championship but it's when the British Two Strokes Championship had just started and I was looking at the rounds and I think it was only a five round series or so and there was only slightly more travelling to do the British so I signed up for that and then we went to Cullum and I think I missed the podium by one point, so it was like, so my dad, as soon as you, it's like you're so close, it was just like you had the bug again. So you just bang straight back in it. Yeah, like he that. was right out and bought me a brand new, <laughs> brand new two stroke, and then that was it. <laughs> straight what away about again. you then on a personal level? Did you, when you stopped, like, 
you obviously, you know, like I said, you you what, did things what young men do. Do you think now those few years where you did stop has been good for you because you kind of kind of got that out of your system? Oh, so, totally. Do you know what I mean? So like like yeah, yeah. you've you've seen that other side and what pe normal people yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, uh, you see riders now and they're a bit on the fence whether they want to be a pro motocrosser yeah. or they want to be party boy and the two definitely do not mix no. so it was good for me to go and do all that and then you realise like it's a bit like the motocross like even if I go back now and see my friends are still doing the same yeah they're still stuck in the same rut and it was just the motocross was a great thing to get me away from that really yeah so it, was it does brilliant. give you a focus yeah, like yeah. nothing like nothing else one thing I have noticed um you know, when I say you burst on the scene, obviously you haven't. What I mean is, at this level, you've—it's man, like you've definitely gone up a level this year. And you seem to me like your fitness is a strong point. Now, I didn't know mm. this. I bumped into Dave Dugan earlier on, yeah, because obviously I know Dave from you know when Jason used to ride and whatever, and he told me that he's kind of helping you out and got involved with that. So I've done a little bit with Dave towards yeah, the yeah. end of my career when I—I I was, was never that? one for horrendous. <laughs> horrendous i never i never want to do anything like that again i did like a fitness test with him i was at the end of my career riding for a bit of fun but i was part of the rtt team thing whatever set up so i kind of obliged and went with it oh dude i felt i felt bad for two weeks i felt physically ill he ruined me i was in hell of a state but he said you obviously did pretty well although you know so the fitness is there but he's yeah, pretty yeah. brutal as a trainer right Oh yeah, totally. That just happened by chance. I'd, Jason was obviously his son who raced yeah. a bit f before my time, so I didn't even really know who they were. Yeah. It was his other son I met through mountain biking, and he said, my dad will put you through your paces, he's trained blah de blah So he gave me his number, and then I left it for a few weeks and phoned him. Yeah. And left him a voicemail saying, I hear you're the guy that's going to put me through yeah. my paces. If I'm up for the challenge, give me a call back if yeah. you fancy it. And he only lives a couple oh, there's of There's Conrad, and it is, that's, that's just, that's just... Get off my van! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're, I'm doing a bloody man in the van, and Conrad Muse lean, leaning all over the front of my van. Get off! <laughs> Scratching it! <laughs> He's talking about oh, it. Conrad, Conrad's <laughs> talking about your crash. <laughs> oh, that needs to stop. <laughs> no, no, that's, yeah. So, so he's he's bloody brutal, isn't he? Like to put you through it, but oh, obviously yeah. he pulls you in the shape. Yeah, he's just it's all fell into place nicely. Obviously, he's from ten minutes up yeah. the road from me back. Well, grew up there. Yeah. but he's lived in the south for a long time, so there was just sort of that thing where you click. He's well, yeah. everyone kind of knows him as yeah. pushing you to your limits and. But I just went and gave a hundred percent. You probably don't know this, up. but I'm going to tell you. He said to me today. Um, because I didn't know that obviously until I bumped into him. They said that um, he goes, "You're really good," as in like you want to do it. He said, "If like if you say to be there at ten, you're there at like quarter ten. Mm. So that's obviously a, a good trait, you know. Yeah, clearly yeah. you want it, and and it's starting to show out on the track. Admittedly, like yeah, you just yeah. said, you got to start keeping it on two know. wheels. But the speed, I mean, you're carrying some serious speed at the minute. Yeah, obviously the whole this is all came through. Well, I had flashes of speed when. Yeah when I was riding myself but um, obviously yeah. since I got a full time ride with Gabriel they've kind of put in like a structured programme and you get to go to Spain in the off season you can that, I was said to Simon like we put more hours in in the off season yeah. than I would do in a whole year before so I think that sort of brings your consistency up rather because you're just so familiar with your equipment whereas before it's a bit like jump on your bike get to yeah. the weekend and you're just twisting the throttle around until you can't twist it anyway. So is this the first sort of, what I would say, like structured team that you've been on then? Yeah, before yeah. that it was always just on me your and dad. Just, you and your dad, yeah. Yeah, and he was saying, do this, do that, and, and so, he'd come in and say, I want to do this, and he'd say, no, nope, we're doing this, and it was just... I was going to say, so how so, does that dynamic work? Is he cool with that? Does he feel like he's had his nose put out of joint a little bit, or is he happy that you've got... he was so hands on, yeah. so at the start he just he didn't want it well he's he's been coming to every race recently yeah. but at the start i think he just felt like there was no place for him there yeah. obviously there's mechanics there's people that up, put up and down the setup there's everything's in place so he really just needs to come and be a spectator yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've never been in that position. It must be hard for a parent, a lot of parents, to let go, particularly when they've, you know, brought, brought you up through and whatever. But like you said, everybody's got to grow up, and evolve, and move on, haven't they? So I think he enjoys it now. I think he he does. definitely does. I met him for yeah. the first time at Fat Cat, and he was full of it. I had a good chat with him here. Yeah. He was telling like me about it. Yeah, no, he, he, well, I think <laughs> a bit of both. I think Probably at that both. point. Yeah. At that point, it seems that from the outside looking in. Um, the team seems a really nice fit, like a good bunch of guys. I don't Definitely. really know them, you know, the guys that well. Obviously, I've known Liam quite a while and his dad, but yeah, I don't, you know, as a team, and they've really stepped it up, haven't they, this year? Like gone up, gone up a level, like supporting yeah. you. It's a commitment. It's fair play to them. Mm. I think the results speak for themselves. Really. Yeah, I mean, they're, well, third in the championship, joint points with second. Liam's running up the front end. Yeah. Next one now. It's a team that really like puts their effort into us progressing. Yeah. Which is always obviously really nice. That's where the money goes to into us, which is Simon's not really yeah, there. Yeah, doesn't say it's Simon's ego. not yeah. He's just there to see us do well and obviously if we do well as a team so he does well and it's just it's almost like a little family to be yeah. honest. That's what you need, a tight yeah, yeah. thing. Especially if you move from home. So how how are you finding it in the beautiful south? My my neck of the woods on the <laughs> south coast after so for where is it Paisley? Is that where you're from in Scotland? Yeah, just quite like, contrasting. Just, just Paisley. Yeah, Paisley I don't know, Portsmouth is pretty yeah, because so, Glasgow's just beautiful. Not believe how temperature wise you know, everyone is yeah. Oh yeah. Traffic jams that I'd yeah. never seen before, I thought. <sighs> To be honest, I really. I would have thought Paisley has still got effect because that's in. An, am I got this right? That's in and around Glasgow, not far yeah, from Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. So well, we're thought... we actually like in Houston, which right, is like so you're better, so. 15, yeah. 20 minutes outside yeah. Paisley, so it's quite rough. It's quite a quiet <laughs> yeah, village. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Portsmouth is rough. Sorry, people living for <laughs> Dave Garland's going to be on my case with that one. Um, no, it's all right, isn't it? Where, so whereabouts? Are you based right in Portsmouth or just outside? Uh, Waterlooville. So. All oh, right, yeah, not yeah, far yeah. at all. Yeah. Which is obviously the all the workshop and stuff yeah. down that way, so it's just handy. Uh, although I do ride full time, I had had been doing all the team stuff yeah. in the workshop, but we've got a full time mechanic in there now, which will relieve a lot of pressure. Which so what? So what are your local uh, haunts now? Where do you go? I, mean, I know you guys have to travel to go training and stuff like that, but when the season starts, where are you kind of riding at the minute? You just big shout out to Leroy at Mill Lane. Nah. <laughs> he did. He asked he, for that one. He did. He teed that up. Yeah, there you go. Mill Lane. Get yourself to Mill yeah. Lane, like Lee Tolan's track. It is good there, though, isn't it? It's oh, very it's good. perfect and it's yeah. prep nice. Yeah. Especially if you're just going out to have, have yeah. a bit of fun. It's yeah. a nice layout. Um, or the GP track Beer Regis. Yeah, with but, Steve Elford. If you if you don't if you've never heard of a track Beer Regis Rogers uh, Rogers Hill Raceway, Danny down there does a great job. Yeah, mm. it's it's a premier. It sounds like I'm being sarcastic. I'm not. It's, a, it's actually a very good practice track. Definitely, isn't it? and they mix it up a lot. Like got a lot of you go like there and they change it every time, so you need to think yeah. about. Yeah. Like a lot of tracks, you, especially on the hard pack, it's a bit like road racing. You could go and you could go three weeks later and the same lines yeah. work. Whereas when they're changing the track all the time, that's right. It's nice to need to think. We'll try this or try that. Because a lot of the time. Well, you know what it's like, you get all the local heroes that are yeah. just fast at their one practice yeah. track. I'm going to be entering the uh, Bear Regis GP soon, so watch out, John <laughs> Adamson. I'm coming for you. Um, I watch you ride, and to me, and uh, again, I haven't followed your career enough to really know what's your preferred condition. You look very, you look, you look very comfortable in sand. Is that is that because you have more sand tracks up there, or is it not your preferred thing? Is it just it's all sand? If you don't want to ride sand, then you can't ride in no. the winter in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And actually, well, there's two hard pack tracks really. Yeah. There's Duns, well, the three. There's Duns, Johnny's track, Fenton, and yeah, what Gilpeg. Place, yeah. So there's literally, but even Fenton and stuff's a couple hours for me. So it? it's really just. Oh yeah. All we rode was sand, and then as a. I think the biggest see coming down south and riding a lot of hard pack yeah. has helped me so much because because what you need you need to be able to ride the yeah. variety you can't just be there one week and then totally off the next week so yeah we're definitely struggling for sand circuits down south so mm. we need to need to is France isn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah yeah you need to find a decent sand circuit down south Steve Elford if you're watching this which hopefully you are he'll tell you how good matchings used to be Steve <sighs> but that's just not, but we're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> get into tr talking about track prep though Steve it'll end up being an, like an essay that you'll end up writing an answer to <laughs> um but you do you go train with those guys because they 
he's got that little rowing competition thing going on. Have you <laughs> taken him on on that? Yeah, I don't think Elford's actually beat anyone. I think he invites everyone down. <laughs> and I think he's lost every time. Oh, yeah, and he but... talked to you about the science of rowing, but... Right, he beat me, so maybe you should invite, invite me over. <laughs> he'd, he'd handsomely beat me. So, you know, realistically then, John, where's where you, where's you at with your expectations? You know, now you're on a bit of a, of a team and you're starting to gather momentum. You know, you, you seem really determined and already from just getting to know you a little bit I haven't got to know you very long like you're not interested in anything other than getting on the box and winning races which is a nice, great attitude mm. to have obviously today I had such a good opportunity yeah a whole shot in that race and leading and then obviously my rear wheel clipped a bank and went down but um, as I said earlier still right up there in the championship yeah. just need to, I think especially with this class consistency is the main thing like some week people are there some this has been my worst weekend but apart from that yeah uh, and uh, throughout the other championships we seem to have been there every week so it's just trying to make it a bit like rather than yeah. massive highs and massive lows yeah so, uh, so it was you know coming through is consistency been your thing or has it always no. been so, so you're working on that <laughs> yeah, speed being, is... <laughs> being re renownedly inconsistent <laughs> big big crashes and just all yeah. sorts of daftness. Yeah. So it's trying to just. But that comes with that age, thing. doesn't it? You know, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, every year you, you kind of learn when to push a bit more and when not. Or mm. it, uh, well, are you? I mean, are you? You say like you've had an indifferent day, but then at this level, and that class is stacked out there. You know, you've got to you've got to push on and take a few risks, haven't you? Yeah, and you can't just be a sitting duck. You've got no. to be pushing for the front. And the only way you get consistently fast is by running that sort of pace. Yeah. Um. What it's, about? It's been nice for the GP boys to come over and yeah. like, and they're not walking away with it. In fact, God, not even, at all. Yeah, so like, they're kind of top ten as well. So it's nice just because I think a lot of people see British Championship motocross mm. and think just a load of dafties riding around oh, the field. No, it's not that. It's, it's like not in that. other countries they seem to be superstars, and then over here it's like yeah. they seem to get poo pooed. So it's nice for them to come over and show them that. We are fast and we are pushing a good pace. Oh, big time, big yeah. time. Have you got any plans? Have the team's got any aspirations to do any kind of EMX stuff or, or wildcard GP or anything like that? Well, I've entered for the MXGP in Matterley. Have just you? It's the local one. This is so, good, this is good. I didn't know this. Yeah, this is good three, stuff. Three, 350 to ride there. I, I did, I thought you were just going to get demolished, yeah. but then I thought, it's a good experience. Oh. Nobody expects you to do anything there when no. this the top 20 year old factory riders you can just go there i yeah. say relax but i know you'll definitely you'll definitely <laughs> give it the bigger and i got no yeah. i got no doubt about that so <laughs> growing up then racing up there in scotland who was in your sort of you know who did you hang around with i see um i saw i think billy mckenzie posted something the other day so are you pretty tight with billy he, he told, posted something about you or yeah yeah well i've been doing some billy's just obviously been around the way and he's sharing yeah. a bit of knowledge just from I think he's a cool guy and yeah. just a laugh to be around as well so it's nice just to get days out riding with him and obviously he's a wealth of knowledge so yeah. it's good for him to say do this and do that he's just trying to smooth me out really as well mm. and he still comes out in his old five. I know funny Fair story play. we went to Lickers and we were riding round and I could see him we were crossing the track and I thought he's catching me <laughs> we were out doing a session and I thought he's catching me but there was a big puddle on the track and he was just he was cutting, cutting it track. <laughs> yeah, so, so he came over and I said you want to get an entry for the British don't you yeah. and then you could just see him he's running laughing. away but yeah he's a good guy to be around and obviously all of the guys up there obviously knowledge. yeah like with, with Bry as well and you mentioned Johnny Johnny's track at Fenton mm. did you ever get what was it Archer Fit was his place Archer Field were you old enough to ride that that first track mm. he built no, oh no. you would have loved a bit of that Fenton. Ooh. Fenton's the first one that I went wrong. Oh no, Johnny had a sand track on his bit of land up there, it was amazing. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have loved that. Definitely a good place to go. What about the Scottish Championship? That seems to be like you went and raced, uh, what was the, what was the one? Tain. Tain. It yeah. looked amazing. I mean, I've never been there, it looks amazing. But it looks like Stu's doing a really good job in raising the bar in Scottish Mercury. Oh, when you go there, it's like Flock a up, that is. Stu yeah, Flockhart. Stu Flockhart. Really. When you go there, it's like a properly run meeting. Yeah. Everything, good prize money. Everything runs on time. Stuart's obviously yeah. keen on bikes as well, so if he sees stuff, he sorts it. Um, he's done it last year and this year as well. That yeah. was the first round at Tain. Obviously, with this year, everything's clashing, so he's just charging on. Yeah. 
because like we are the minority really yeah. to go up and he just wants to please the most people up there. And you gotta try it, I mean it's a long way to go. I mean you've literally moved the other end of the country. So yeah, well it's ten is six hundred. Yeah, and that's miles. even for you. Like how far was it from I think home? It was just under twelve hours from Portsmouth. But obviously I stopped at home so it was like six yeah. and then another four. So so like yeah, even on from your place. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's like four Jesus. hours north of Glasgow. They go into Desert Martin I read as well, so that'd be pretty mm. cool. Yeah. I think he's got a lot of support from Yeah. Well, the Irish guys yeah. and, and Milwaukee's got behind it as well so fair play to Stu he's doing a good job with that but yeah I would love to go up and support yeah. it and it is, I did a few on the 450 as well we made three weekends and that was great as well and yeah. so it was just nice going riding tracks that you've rode since you were a boy going home yeah, yeah. absolutely well it's I, I'm suitably impressed mate honestly because I like I, I you know I thought, like I said heard of your name sort of a little bit and whatever but I don't know it's just for me it's just been like last year and a bit it's, since you obviously got with the team or whatever it's just like shit man he, he, he's fast like mm. real fast like you said just got to try and work on keeping it on the island yeah yeah that's not a criticism that's an observation before he lays one on me because <laughs> he's had an alcoholic beer he might get yeah. leery <laughs> non-alcoholic beer um john it's been a pleasure chatting to you obviously now you're doing matterly uh, if you have got tickets and to go we're to we're going to the emx emx the next weekend uh and yeah cool I think is it Magura, Mantova? Uh, yeah, Mantova. Is it Man Mantova? Yeah. Mantova. Yeah. Either one of those tracks are cool. The one on the hill. Oh, Majora. Yeah, Majora. You're getting a ride there. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, just a privilege to ride that alone. Yeah. I, I raced it once. It was amazing. Yeah, you'll love that. That jump where you go up the hill and the one that's got a slight turn on the. Oh yeah, that's that's proper. You'll like that. Good over there. Good coffee and ice cream. <laughs> I know. I use it. Um, yeah, John, thanks for your time. And so doing that would be cool. But as I said, if you're going to go to Matterley, get behind this guy. He's going to be in it. What did you say, MX1? MX1, yeah. That's rad. Running number, old number 49. 49, yeah, no, brilliant. Good. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> listen, keep chugging away at it because I, I really do think you're not far off. We just saw, like, I don't want to rub salt in your wounds, but it seemed like a first time winner today. I, I, I think your time's getting closer and closer. You know, certainly the speed's there, like I said. Good starts mm. and just it'll click in the end uh say hello to your dad for me i i enjoyed chatting with him last week it was good and um we'll see you at matley yeah drank all my beer so yeah he's trying no no alcoholic beer need another alcoholic beer in here <laughs> nice one mate all the best yeah cheers cheers Thanks very much. so there you go that's john adamson um he's gonna get out and get going all the way back to portsmouth yeah, yeah. quite quite close to home local i'll see you see soon you john thanks cheers. for your time there goes John. Right, that was a uh, another man in the van for this year. Um, great chat to John. I think he's got huge potential. He's certainly got loads and loads of heart. Um, again, thanks to Whole Shot Motocross, uh, Motorhomes, sorry. And um, of course, these are not non-alcoholic and I'm getting it wrong. Um, yeah, so thanks to Whole Shot Motorhomes. Uh, big up them and FXR and everybody that gets behind what we're doing at Dirt Hub. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to try and get another man in the van done today if I can, which will be the one that follows this in a couple of weeks' time. Again, people, thanks for viewing. Stay safe out there. Keep supporting British Motocross. And you know what? Keep being positive. Let's just have some positivity. Sick to death of all the negativity. So um, let's keep this thing rolling. Right, people, I'm done. See you soon.